G'day folks and welcome to this report of uh, 1938 from the uh, the full campaign scenario from Dai Senso. This has been a, a big year for the Japanese. Um, this uh, in, in this video I'll cover all the way through from basically November, December turn in 1937, late 1937, through to the beginning of November, December 1938. So we're covering all those four seasons throughout the 1938 turn. Fortunes have certainly swung towards the Japanese. They have, uh, you may recall in the last video, they declared war on Hopei. They were kind of caught up briefly in Peiping. Um, they had, I think, two unsuccessful attacks to start the year. But then they've had just success after success after success. They haven't had a single really bad role throughout the year, which has enabled them to sweep through Hopei, effectively conquer uh, the country and you can see down the south here in Kiangsu they've made um, well what they've done here this is uh, specifically I think it's Japan supports the nationalists and this lets them it's a really unusual event it lets them find a port in Kiangsu without any non-Chinese ground forces so they, they were first of all we picked Canton this had um, some Kiangsu some Chinese ground forces we basically remove those, they become interned, and we place a Japanese detachment marker there. We then did the same thing in Nanking. And this is an unusual way to grab Nanking, but it's a port. Um, I can't read any, any restrictions about this not being eligible. So the Kiangsu forces here, which were quite substantial, were then interned. And again, we place a Japanese detachment marker there. While this is happening, we have this, this ground unit moved to Formosa using Japanese transports from Nagasaki. They then moved across here to Fuchao, captured that fort. This is the, the first port, sorry, that was captured. And they've just marched over land. They can draw now supply from Canton, so they've, they've marched to capture unoccupied Changsha. Uh, meanwhile, the, the main Japanese offensive in the north has, as I said, gone very well. They've now invaded Kiangsu, captured Qingchao. Uh, the... The nationalist Chinese forces have really been forced to voluntarily retreat. They're pulling back away from the frontier. Uh, there are only now two Kiangsu cities, Wuhan and Kuailin, over in the left here, that remain in Chinese control. Unfortunately, Allied diplomacy continues to go pretty well. Uh, the Western powers first influenced Yunnan, and then Yunnan joined the Western powers um, as an ally. The Soviets have influenced Xinjiang, uh, and they have Soviet aid to communist China, so we're getting a lot of Kansu reinforcements. So they're pretty happy. They're, they're just sitting along their frontier here, um, mindful of their kind of supply restrictions. Uh, but yeah, I mean, at the end of 1937, I was a bit worried that the Japanese were going too slow. Now I'm pretty happy with their progress. Um, you can see here we're looking to build some headquarters behind the lines. The Kwangtung forces can't leave Mechikuo. Um, the, uh, the Soviets have been building up a couple of their infantry way up in the north, but I mean, their, their pre-war and limited war decks are pretty restricted until the kind of the European war escalates. And this is an interesting thing about Dai Senso is that if you're just playing it alone without the Totalic Krieg uh, accompaniment, which I'm doing right now, so I'm just playing Dicenso, the European war is sort of abstracted through these kind of, uh, through events and through, I mean, this, this count here is very important, European limited war. Every time this comes out, and it'll be coming out in, you can see I'm here in two turns, we'll make another die roll for this to see if limited war breaks out. Once that happens, then the Soviets are kind of given more options to uh, implement their war plan and transfer, transfer troops if they want over to the east and, and become more involved with what's happening in Asia. Uh, Britain is also, they have their neutrality pact. The USA is at quarantine. Uh, Russia and the Soviet miners are both at border disputes. So they're both policy-affected countries. So it's really just communist China and nationalist China waging war against Japan. Japan is going all out with their army support, building a lot of infantry forces. Um, at present, the Navy uh, is in the government marker holding box. Uh, so I'm kind of limited. And there was a great, uh, a great moment where the Japanese picked a political options card that gave them a blitz marker. 
And then the allies got very lucky and rolled a command failure. And this command failure event um, it really restricts what the Japanese can do. Um, it was a yeah, command failure. So no exiting zones of control within five hexes of this, uh, this marker. Uh, and it basically nullified that Japanese blitz turn, which is unfortunate for the Japanese, but again, they've had successes nonetheless. What else is happening? Uh, a couple of colonial Japanese replacements coming out. Um, the Japanese have not lost a lot of steps. Um, they're doing pretty well. Uh, as I said, rolling re really very successfully throughout 1938. The... Uh, yeah, what else? The Shoal Restoration Marker is in the Strategic Warfare box. Um, the Japanese have a couple of troop convoys out. Not a lot, but just enough to kind of... <laughs> their main concern here is, or priority, is to kind of ferry troops around the coast here. They're beginning to spread to the south. Maybe Indochina is uh, in their line of sights. Um, I think our next Japanese objectives will be um, Chungking and Lanshao. Um, yeah, as I said, just the Japanese focusing on that land war in, uh, in China. So that brings us to the end, pretty much, of 1938. Japanese, as I said, um, feeling bold, feeling pretty confident with their advances, and the Chinese now uh, caught in this area and, and looking to, uh, I don't know, save themselves some, somehow. I'll, uh, I'll report back soon on, on how that goes.